Good afternoon and welcome to the sixth day of Kwanzaa. Habari Ghani, we are celebrating Kuumba, which means creativity. Um, my name is Anna Hearn. I am representing Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, we are celebrating Kwanzaa uh, for 2021, soon to be 2022. Um, there is a Kwanzaa committee this year. Wesley Peters is of Conducting Creativity. We have uh, LeBron McAdoo of Backyard en Enterprises. And of course, uh, myself and my mother, Garbo Hearn from Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing. Um, so we welcome you. Um, we will have several opportunities for you to engage during the ceremony, and you will have opportunities to engage off camera. Uh, we do have an, uh, a community Zawadi, um, and that is an opportunity to give back. And this year we are accepting new or gently used books for the storybook project of Arkansas uh, that connects families of incarcerated individuals through reading. Um, so we definitely want to give them uh, materials to work with. So you can bring those down to Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing, 1001 Wright Avenue. Um, we want to present those tomorrow. Um, on the last day of Kwanzaa, um, but I'm definitely glad to welcome Wesley Peters, who is going to um, host our Kwanzaa ceremony. So welcome Wesley Peters of Conducting Creativity. Thank you so much, Anna and Nicholas. Yes, it is a unity cup that I'm drinking out of. Babar Ghani. I need everybody to come off a of mute if this is your first day joining us. When I say Habar Ghani today, the response back is Kaumba. So do all of us as much as we can in the way we can uh, in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. So Habar Ghani. Kumba. One more time. Habar Ghani. Kumba. All right. The next person that you'll see is Anna Hearn, and she will give us a history of Kumba. <laughs> One second. I like it. Y'all saying it just right. Hello, welcome to the Little Rock Citywide Commemoration of Kwanzaa. My name is Anna Hearn, and I just wanted to give you all a short background of Kwanzaa and give you an explanation of some of the things that we will use during the ceremony today. So let's get started with what is Kwanzaa. Uh, before we can talk about the holiday, we can kind of talk about the founder, Dr. Milana Karinga. Uh, he is a professor and chair of the Department of Africana Studies at California State University. Dr. Karinga created Kwanzaa in 1966, uh, a very tumultuous time in African-American history and American history with the Watts Rebellion. Dr. Karinga wanted to create a holiday that was mainly rooted in family and culture and reflection. Um, it's not necessarily a religious holiday. It is a cultural one that celebrates our talents, celebrates each member of the family. And even though it is not celebrated by just one religion, there will be some spiritual qualities that you'll see throughout the ceremony. So the holiday, 
Kwanzaa is celebrated every day between December 26th and January 1st. Uh, a different principle is celebrated each day that is designed to be about reflection and what we want to do for the new year. Uh, Kwanzaa comes from the Swahili phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits. Um, so this is a time of reflection, a time of thinking about what you want for the new year of harvest. Um, a lot of people, they uh, print Kwanzaa with just one A at the end, or you may see it how we printed it here. Fun fact, when they first celebrated Kwanzaa back in 1966, Dr. Karinga had seven children in his household and every child wanted to be represented with a letter. So they added the extra A for Kwanzaa. And it's very fitting because we have seven principles, seven letters. So Kwanzaa is not a replacement for Christmas. Many people celebrate both. Um, it is celebrated all over the world by different faiths, nationalities, and cultures. Um, it is truly a universal holiday. Swahili, uh, the language that we use to explain what Kwanzaa means, um, is a language that is spoken widely on the African continent. Um, and the celebration of Kwanzaa is modeled on traditional African harvest festivals. So let's get into our seven principles. The Nguzo Saba, uh, Nguzo's principle, Saba seven, seven principles. Um, you'll see on the screen the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Uh, every day during the week of Kwanzaa, you may hear someone ask, Kabari Ghani, or what's the news? What's the principle of the day? So when someone asks, hey, Kabari Ghani, you're supposed to give them the principle of today. So our principles are celebrated each day. Umoja, unity. Kujichagalia, self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. Kumba, creativity. Imani, faith. Habari Ghani. So the symbols in Kwanzaa table as you can see, seven candles on the screen. They're in red, black, and green. Let's talk about why red, black, and green candles. This is the Pan-African flag. Those are the colors of the diaspora. The red stands for the blood that has been shed for the liberation of Black people and those throughout the diaspora. The black is for the color of our skin for our people. Green is the abundant natural wealth of Africa, those lush landscapes, um, the things that Africa has contributed to the world. So these colors are very important and significant to our celebration and really help us to reflect on what our people have been through and what we continue to contribute to the world. So Kwanzaa is celebrated different ways by different families, but there are common elements that you will see on every Kwanzaa table. Uh, before we can start talking about the Kwanzaa setup, we have to talk about the foundation. Um, to have a strong house, you have to have a strong foundation. And the foundation of our Kwanzaa setup is the Mkeka. Um, that is a straw mat. It's usually almost handmade, and it is the setting for our Kwanzaa setup. Um, just like Kanaka has the menorah, the Kwanzaa setup is hosted by the Kanara, that is our candle holder. And the Kanara hosts the Mashuma Saba. Um, there's the word Saba again. There's seven candles, which represent the Nguzo Saba. And a principal is celebrated each day and will light a candle for that principal. As I said earlier, Kwanzaa is from a longer phrase, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which is first fruit of the harvest. And our harvest is represented here on the table with the Mazeo. Babunzi, Kwanzaa is about family, our community, our culture, and everyone should see themselves in the ceremony, in the symbols on the table. And the Babunzi stands for the number of children in our household. I know we have a lot of children and community uh, members watching, so the children in our community this year will be represented by the colonels on the form. The first day of Kwanzaa is Umoja, unity. So the Kikombe Cha Umoja is the unity cup and it will be used in our libation ceremony to lift up those elders who have passed on. 
And last but not least, we have the Wadi. Um, these are gifts that are given during Kwanzaa. Dr. Karinga, the founder of Kwanzaa, felt like Kwanzaa had become root excuse me, felt like Christmas had become really commercial. People were focused on um, buying all these gifts and not really focusing on the family and community. And so what he wanted to do was still give gifts during Kwanzaa, but they are to be homemade or knowledge. So if you cook well, if you sew, those are gifts that you can give during Kwanzaa or books that are sources of knowledge to enrich someone's life. So this is our Kwanzaa setup. And now um, just a really brief overview of the ceremony. Um, as I said earlier, everyone should be represented in the Kwanzaa ceremony or the setup. We always ask permission of an elder to begin. We recognize their wisdom and their time on this earth. So we just want to get that permission, that blessing to start. Uh, then our host for the day will introduce the principal and give us some reflections. Um, then we'll have our libation ceremony, which lifts up those members of our community that have passed on that really embodied Umoja in their lifetime. Our host will introduce our community leader who will reflect on the day's principal. Then we'll have volunteers, community members, share how they want to embody the day's principal going forward. Our host will come back to introduce our creative expression. We'll enjoy the talents of our best and brightest artisans. Then we'll light the Kanara for the principal of that day, followed by community announcements, we're going to talk about our community Zawadi as well as the next day, and we welcome volunteers. And we'll close out our ceremony with Harambe, which means pull or come together. Thank you so much, and we look forward to celebrating each day of Kwanzaa with you. Thank you so much, Anna. And as it is custom, uh, we. We can't go forward without the permission of an elder. So um, any elder, please give us permission to continue on with our ceremony. I give my permission. Thank you please. so much. Habar Ghani. Kumba. Kumba. So when I think of Kumba creativity, I um, go back to my first uh, work of literacy, The Plant Doctor. Um, and if you haven't read the book, you can pick it up at Pyramid. Um, but it's a specific part of the book where um, the main character, Ivory, is looking at his neighborhood and he's comparing it to a neighborhood that um, is, has more development than his. And he's asking his grandma, why does my neighborhood look the way it does compared to um, the neighborhood by the dentist. And grandma um, uses analogies using her flowers, but then she goes into, uh, she talks about um, uh, Dr. George Washington Carver. Um, and Mr. Carver, Dr. Carver, um, actually was recruited to come teach at Tuskegee. And this was before Tuskegee is the way it is today. When he arrived uh, and saw the agriculture department, which he would be in charge of, it was nothing but trash heaps for miles on end. So instead of um, complaining and, and talking about what he didn't have, he was actually very committed to the work. He got with his students and he uh, embodied this principle of Kuumba. They were actually taking uh, field trips to the trash sheets to dig out different things that they can use for their class experiments. So um, that's what Kaumba means to me. It's about um, acknowledging what you have, knowing what you have, even if it looks to the rest of the world like trash and, and, and turning these trash, and we've heard this before, into treasures. So Habar Ghani. Kumba. Kumba. Uh, and next, we will have Angelo Glover for libations. Um, so the next person you'll see is uh, Mr. Glover. Glover. Abaragami. Kumba. Kumba. Our fathers, mothers came here, lived here, loved, struggled, and built here. At this place, their love and labor rose like the sun and gave strength and meaning to the day. 
For them then who gave so much, we give in return. On this same soil, we will sow our seeds and liberation at a higher level of human life. May our eyes be the eagle, our strength be the elephant, and boldness of our life be like the lion. And may we remember and honor our ancestors and the legacy they left us for as long as the sun shines and the waters flow. At this time, we will pause for a moment of silence. Please unmute and lift up the name of an ancestor that embodied the spirit of Kaumba in their lifetime. On the count of three, say that name. Dr. Earlene Larry. Sally 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 We would like to uplift the spirit of future. We would like to uplift ourselves. Ashe. Ashe. We will close the libation ceremony with Ashe. 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 Thank you, Mr. Glover. Uh, next, we will have a special presentation by Backyard Enterprises. And while we're waiting, um, how do you plan on using Kaumba? Uh, right, please put that in the comments. Uh, back. My name is LaRon McAdoo, and I am presenting the Little Rock Twenty Twenty Two Kwanzaa Three Sixty Five Artistic Expression. Let us be activated by this young high school student, Sarah. Hutchison, that's right, multi-award winning pianist. I mean, she's phenomenal, but she's still in high school going to Pulaski Academy. Let's give it up for Miss Hutchison. Yeah.
Alrighty. So please expect little spots of creativity throughout the ceremony. <clears throat> Thank you to Backyard Enterprises. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, Wesley Peters. Um, he is a Little Rock native. He attended the University of Central Arkansas where he studied African-American studies and sociology. Uh, Wesley worked as the co-campaign field director for Frank Scott Jr. for Little Rock's mayor. His role included organizing millennials to get out the boat. Wesley is a creative writer as well as a business writer. His first publication, The Plant Doctor, um, is a very successful publication um, for elementary age uh, students for second through fourth grade. Um, it has been used in classrooms in districts across the country. Uh, Wesley is on the board of a nonprofit called Conducting Creativity. We have seen it in action here for Kwanzaa uh, this week. Uh, they focus on literacy, innovation, and entrepreneurship. They've hosted literacy tours, as well as basketball and entrepreneurship camps um, and other communal events around the city. And it's all about conducting creativity. Uh, Wesley is also the co-founder and CEO of Living Media and he will launch his app pretty soon. So everybody put your hands together for Wesley. He is going to be moderating our panel today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is Kaumba. Um, when I was thinking about this principle along with uh, Jordan Danbury and the rest of the Conducting Creativity Board, um, the first person I can't lie that I thought about was Miss Audrey Long for the simple fact that I've seen her, witnessed her, had conversations with her about how she uses creativity and innovation in the garden. Um, so our panelists here and uh, Miss Audrey, if you could introduce yourself first and then to move, uh, Go ahead, right after her. Yeah. Thank you, Wes, and thank you all uh, for inviting me on to um, your program. Um, um, so uh, these days, I am um, happen to be the director of a garden that we've started here in Pine Bluff. Uh, it's the State Street Good Up Earth Garden um, in a historic um, area near our downtown. And the principles that we use there, we're trying to just engage our community um, to know that there are uh, skill sets, there's material and resources already in our own community to help ourselves be healthy. We're putting a focus on the whole body um, of health. And this project is in collaboration with uh, Dr. Martha Flowers of the Flowers Medical Family, um, and the Flowers Medical Clinic that happens to be adjacent to the property. We're trying to create a, an environment that we can bring healthy food, um, healthy um, activities for the mind, body, and spirit of our, our neighbors. We do a uh, yoga in the garden session. We have a wonderful lady, um, Flo Love, who comes and um, hosts that for us. Uh, we've had uh, the whole setting um, set up that it is very uh, elder and youth friendly, primarily because um, so many of the um, patients of the medical clinic uh, nearby are elders. Um, but particularly during this COVID season, I've tried to make a real effort to get um, folks outside. We really need uh, vitamin D, um, and it only comes from the sun, sun sunshine. So uh, we're having a good time. All of the principles that we're using here um, is sustainable, sustainable and regenerative growing. Every table, every work table, our uh, our raised beds that we're building are all from reclaimed, um, repurposed wood. Um, we even have pallets that uh, we've had projects to stain put together that are that are become our work tables. We have um, 
even um, cable tables. Also, we do composting. All of those projects that we want to take a person from small child all the way up to our elders to have the enriching feeling that we do have resources available in our own community. We just need to use some creativity and getting it. Cool, thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna ask you, um, we'll, we'll get more into detail um, about everything. But Tomas, Tomas uh, can you please tell us just a little bit about you? Peace, everybody. It's Tamu, bro. Tamu's. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is our this is our first official meeting. Me this is good. Uh, what was the question again? I apologize. A little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. A little bit about who I am. Um, I am a community activist. Uh, I'm a lot of things. Uh, one of the main things that we're talking about now is agriculture. So the uh, the art of agriculture is very important because everybody has to eat, you know what I'm saying? So the manifestation of that on a personal level came through what is called sacred growth, which is a concept of basically melding spirituality and science through agriculture, you know what I'm saying? So that encompasses every aspect of life and holistic living. So, I mean, a lot of people don't, or it's always put that science and spirituality don't go together. But our ancestors, that's how we farm. You know what I'm saying? That's how we lived according to nature or uh, the signs and symbols as the, as the elders used to call it. You know what I'm saying? So it was a falling away from the signs and symbols and stuff like that with the old people and the technology amongst the, the, new, the youngsters, you know what I'm saying? So it was a, a immediate bridge there. So, you know, really I would say what I do is try to see a need and feel a need in, in the community. You know what I'm saying? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I have to admit, okay, cool. it, it, it's been wonderful working no, with you. Okay, Miss Audrey, I wanted to kind of um, get into like, uh, in the spirit of Kaumba, what are some current trends of innovation that you found useful in this community garden? Say I have a backyard, um, I don't know much about gardens, or say I have a plot of land and I want a garden, what are some current trends of innovation? Kind of what I see, um really over the, the last number of years, uh, about two years ago, we, I, we did a presentation with some folks with the Wallace Foundation with uh, the Association of City Planners. And they were talking to us about how even new developments, um, urban developments and suburban, de suburban developments are uh, continually putting community gardens in the plan and how that adds so much, that green space adds so much um, property value to spaces or um, home values, basically. I see that trend. I see more community involved people seeing the value of having um, smaller or communal spaces that small groups, churches and such can pull together and design and manage themselves. Um, and I'm just really um, glad to see a lot of innovation um, with sustainability. That's been a, a real thing. You know, it used to be that if you talked about sustainability, that mean, oh, here comes the person, you know, here's the green person. They're gonna get you for, you know, using uh, plastic straws and things. But I've seen it extend more onto us, um, especially in a growing space, upcycling and recycling things. We've got a project now that we've, we've converting um, military missile cases, eight feet long. Um, if you can imagine, heavy as all get out, 150 pounds a piece. We're converting those 
uh, for some of our elders. Um, in fact, we just delivered about seven of them yesterday into growing um, planters for their patios uh, and for their backyards to um, produce their own food. I think really, particularly since COVID, that really opened our eyes um, in not having a lot of items in the stores readily available. And it kind of made us tune in more, I think, hopefully to our, our own bodies and our own health. So that's one of the projects or something here that we're doing. I've had some wonderful feedback from local contractors in um, get, donating their scrap wood and things. It, here in Pine Bluff, um, urban development is tearing down houses um, quite a bit in neighborhoods. And uh, it's my hope that we can kind of continue on this um, trend to make use of some of these uh, spaces. Of course, um, as we're dealing with elders, a lot of, of elders, we have issues like mowing the lawns and that sort of thing. So in our garden spaces, in the garden spaces, even as a couple of years ago, as I was director at Dunbar Garden, I always try to um, use natural products, of course, use wood chips that we can get from some of the tree companies to create an environment where uh, doing lots of, um, lawn mowing is not really necessary. We really just want people to focus on um, enjoying their time with the sowing seeds, with their plants, and then reaping the harvest of what, what we've done. And it's not very difficult. All raised beds. In fact, we're doing more converting of our um, garden space instead of 36 inch wide um, in-ground raised beds. We're raising them up specifically to 16 inches high uh, to, again, accommodate our elders. Um, and incidentally, we're using the compost that we've um, had, um, that we've made from um, asking our neighbors to bring us their food scraps and, and leaves and things along that line. So we are having, having uh, some of our young people and, and everybody to get to see what the process of composting actually is and how we can reuse things, reuse so, ash. I'm um, hearing a lot of uh, renewable kind of energy. And one of the um, one of the things that I, I was uh, asking you and while preparing for this conversation was, do you know anybody who uh, is interested in solar, anybody who does hydroponics? And, uh, you <clears throat> kind of introduced me to Tamu. Mm -hmm. So if you could uh, share just just a little bit about, because I I visited Arizona and I saw solar panels. And I'm like, I don't see those <laughs> every day, say, in Arkansas. So Tamu, can you uh, speak just a little bit about what you do with solar? What is solar? What is hydroponics? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Uh and I'm a, I'm going to do a part of it. I actually have well, I let him speak himself. We have a a, a cohort of uh, partners who is a hydroponic expert that we've been working together. Miss, what you want her in? Very uh, noble L. Noble L. So uh, basically, again, going back to the to the original premise of what I was talking about. I mean, from our ancestors using free, it's called free energy in today's uh, paradigm of of, of things. Uh, we had Z pillars and stuff like that. Our ancestors did. They utilized what is called free energy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of people in our community don't know about the individual Nikola, Nikola Tesla, who dealt with, he basically had uh, wireless free energy at the, turn of this, at the turn of the century. You know what I'm saying? And so the powers to be actually manipulated the use of free energy for profit. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody now has electric bills or whatever, different type of bills that basically uh, tether you to a debt system. So being able to have free energy is actually a big step in becoming free as a people. You know what I'm saying? So solar panels, solar, the sun is a, a um, unlimited source of energy that 
some people are starting to utilize now. Um, it's not really conducive for the bureaucracy to be talking about solar power because it takes uh, revenue out of their uh, final, you know, their bottom line. But as individuals and in our community, uh, solar panels and renewable energy, uh, wind power, uh, again, the free energy, which deals with, uh, it's, it's coming to more of a uh, public light now, but that was a real controversial uh, topic, uh, free energy. They actually, you know, I was, I'm a physics major and my physics teacher back at Yule, he said, free energy does not exist. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, we got free energy engines. So it's always a dichotomy there of what's going on at the grassroots and with the people and the public and the bureaucracy. Oh, right. And so uh, one of the right, one of the advantages or things that we were looking into to offset that is uh, things like maybe a solar park where you have somewhere that can supply energy for an area that is based with us. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, the same thing with uh, wind power, uh, any type of motion creates energy you know what i'm saying so it's us let me let me let me kind of let me interject real quick i i heard something that i kind of want you to go in on so if i'm listening and i don't necessarily have the finances to uh supply a so a whole solar park but i have a backyard or i have an apartment or i have what just something right. small how how can i how can i start using this energy today that's a that's a great question, bro. Uh, and technologies now have made it to where solar systems are. You can have one as small as something to charge your phone with. I know uh, some of us old people remember when they used to have a little solar strip at the top of a calculator. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things that got me interested in solar power. So they have, you can go to uh, like Harbor Freights and buy a small solar system for like $100. That's how I got my introduction about 10 years ago into, you know, dealing with solar power uh, and that form of alternative energy. So they have small setups that you can use that's, you know, very, that's pretty cheap. But if you want to get into the bigger, you know, so you can run like electrical lights off of something small like that. If you want to get into something big, like running a refrigerator, which, uh, requires more power because you have like compressors and thing that really pull a lot of energy, then you have to get into the bigger uh, mm -hmm. system. You know what I'm saying? But here locally, um, a real nice system is off of Woodrow. They actually have a charging station. Uh, I think it's the Ch Tesla charging station. Vehicle, uh, yes. Automobile charging station. For uh, electrical vehicles, you know what I'm saying? Electrical leg conveyances and stuff. So, I mean, on a small scale, you can, you can start as small as a, uh, you know, something to charge a phone with, and then it goes to lights. Or if you're in a garden, you can have your timers or something and your lights on a small, a real small scale that, you know, about $100, $150 could get you started. Okay. Okay. And then um, we're running out of time, but uh, Noel, you said that uh, you could speak on hydroponics. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yield the floor. Top of the day, how you all doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Habar Ghani. Oh, um, in regards to uh, hydroponics, most people uh, are not aware that hydroponics deal with mostly chemicals or alternative methods uh, that's not naturally used in, in, in nature. What I do is aquaponics, which is a, a biomimicry of a, a, a pond's ecosystem. And by that you have natural, uh, natural elements that comes about such as your aquatics, uh, which is your fish, your crustaceans, your mollusks, and things of that nature, including your vegetation. Most people are uh, that you see with hydroponics or aquaponic systems. Uh, and the difference between the two, one is uh, uh, uses fish, 
aquaponics uses uh, fish waste or fish uh, compost, and it's uh, done through a process of de, uh, excuse me, nitrification and denitrification. Uh, that naturally takes place in the environment. So everything that I'm doing as far as aquaponics is uh, basically biomimicry of a pond. And most people are getting into this hydroponics and they're using chemicals and that's not conducive to our body. And okay. if we're doing something of this magnitude, we want to do it in the sense of where it's not a detriment to the uh, to the people, but something that's promoting health and uh, longevity. So I will promote more so aquaponics than hydroponics. But I know you asked about hydroponics, and I didn't want to steer you to another direction. I just want oh, to- Oh, no, no, no. I need what you're giving me yeah. right now. Uh, and also, with dealing with aquaponics, you have more biodiversity, like I was going into. Uh, I know this may not be the time to go into depth of everything, but an overview. Uh, I currently came up with one aquaponics system that allows me to be in 10 different markets. So I don't know of any other one thing that you can do that allows you to be in 10 different markets. Uh, and when I'm saying 10 different markets, I'm talking about resources. Uh, okay. Algae is one of them. Uh, algae grows natural, natural here in the Delta. Uh, most people look at algae as a nuisance. They try to get rid of it, but algae is the superfood that most people are they're eating nowadays, such as spirulina, or spinarilla, or whatever how you pronounce it, spirulina. Uh, so it's different types of algae. Don't get me wrong; some of them are toxic, and some of them can be used for, as biofuels. And that's what we're not capitalizing on. It's only one company that's uh, even using algae as a, a biofuel currently, and that's Exxon. Uh, you have one other university that I know of that's actively doing this. Uh, I talked to the state conservatives with the USDA here in Arkansas. Uh, she's actually two years getting back to me off of something I reached out to her. And she just basically gave me the same information I gave you all and told me that there is no one within the state that's doing any algae farming. So we're going to stop with that. And I can go on into depth about the solar. Uh, my thing is I have a Fair Aquaponic Power LLC, which is my profit company. And I also have a nonprofit, uh, which I'm working with uh, Tammuz and uh, Ms. Cobbs as well, which is Skills Acquired Developmental Services Incorporated. Where we teach various skills and trades like that was done back in the day, which we don't do now. Uh, but getting on solar, I have a SEEK, where it's a sustainable energy efficient kingdom, where we're not just capitalizing on solar, we're using other, other forms of alternative energy as well. Uh, most people don't see the, uh, the use of combining these uh, natural uh, alternative energies. So I wouldn't just tell anyone just to rely on solar or just to rely on uh, water or whatever method. I, I promote to use all of them in sync and find a way to um, to be sustainable that way. I don't um, I don't mean to uh, cut you off or anything like that, but the, the panel is uh, I was supposed to wrap up at one forty five, but I do have one more question um, for everybody. If you could uh, answer it within like a minute, a minute and a half tops. Like it's so much that I want to know. I want to pick everybody's brains personally, but um, from your own just perspective, could you, um, well, number one, could you share where we can find more about you? Because there's a lot of uh, comments in the chat and people want to know just about all these subjects, solar, wind, aquaponics, raised beds. We all want to know uh, as much as we can know. Um, so could you share where we can find more about you? And then could you share uh, just briefly and I asked this question already, but reiterate it. I have a backyard. I have an apartment complex. I have a, a place where I live. How can I get into aquaponics, solar, 
wind energy? How can I start using raised beds? I don't have a large budget. How can I how can I use uh use these tools tomorrow? It's it's the new year. And Miss Audrey, you you can go ahead. Yeah, Wes. Um, in the case of of I, I actually started growing on my patio right out here. Um, certainly feel free to contact me um, about uh, using some of these converted missile cases and even projects just are, that I started with was making growing spaces, uh, self water and growing um, containers out of storage containers. That was my first initial deal. Um, I have some volunteers that work with me that we can build raised beds. We use wood and also uh, roofing metal. Um, primarily, I would say work on the design of your space to make it very, um, uh, let's say, efficient with utilizing your sun and the resources that you have. So I've uh, put in my um, Facebook and um, reaching out to to me through the the um, to the garden, the uh, hashtag is already there. Thank you. Uh, anybody go next? Uh, in regards to everybody reaching out to me and so forth, I don't have a website up at the moment, but uh, through my collaboration efforts, We do have a collaborative website. It's called what is it? The web? The grow, the grow op the grow And I can put everything in the chat as far as my personal email and, and, and private number, cell number as well. Only text, please. But I will put that in the uh, email for those who uh, had uh, a likeness to reach out to me and so forth, if that would help. Uh, in regards to your, your other question, as far as getting started immediately. Trash cans, you can put, uh, start with goldfish and then some, just some regular uh, trash bins. Uh, goldfish uh, excrete more ammonia. Uh, when the ammonia, well, which is our waste, when the ammonia hits the water, it turns into uh, a nitrification process. So with doing that, that excretes more uh, nutrients for the plants. It goes through a, a breakdown for far as bacteria and things of that nature, and it turns into nitrites and nitrates for, excuse me, nitrites turn into nitrates for the plant, which are beneficial. So uh, everything is in-house and being sustainable in that capacity. But if anybody wants some more uh, information, uh, I'm going to put it in there. We can reach out on another platform. I know you're on a time limit, but I thank you again for having me on here, and I yield the floor. Thanks, Wes. Tamus. Okay, yes, sir. Um, I just left my the email to the Sacred Grove uh, in the chat. And I also, right quick, I want to bring in uh, somebody that's with the, the Grow Up, and they can, she can explain also because it's actually like a partnership we have going. Hey guys, it's Keisha, Keisha Cobb. I am one of the partners with Tamuz and Mr. Fair. If you go to, if you visit www.thegrowop, that's G-R-O-W-O-P.org, we have free materials for beginning gardeners, uh, such as some reclaim wood. We work with Audrey all the time. Hey, Audrey. Um, we have pots available free for anyone who wants to get started, especially in a small space. I started on my patio too, like Miss Audrey did. And so um, we don't have a lot of soil right now, but we'll be getting some. We work with uh, Miss Audrey for materials or we give her some, she gives us some. So I know starting off, it was hard to get materials for me and us. So the Grow Up pretty much stands to do that. We get education and other materials from Mr. Fair with aquaponics. Um, and uh, Mr. L, of course, does a lot of education as well as myself. So we have pots in different sizes from small, medium to extra large, and uh, maybe some wood if someone needs some for small garden beds. So go to the Grow Up. You can become a member for free. And um, once you drop that information, our partners and other, um, other people we work with will get you some info on that. Thanks. Thank you. 
Okay. Everybody, uh, thank you, panel, for joining me today. If y'all could, please stay on for a little bit after we finish, because it's a bunch of people in the chat that want to know more. Um, I really wanted this to, I really wanted to use this as an introduction to um, just agriculture in general. Uh, I know uh, the 12th Street Corridor uh, in Little Rock is labeled a food desert. Um, but Miss Audrey, we've had this conversation. There's plenty of community gardens that's over there that don't get the exposure that they need. So I, I was uh, really curious to see um, if we can just have a more united conversation about uh, community garden, solar energy, and, and thank you for the correction, aquaponics uh, and, and wind energy. So I thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we will um, definitely be having more conversations because um, it is time to use our creativity to nourish ourselves. So I appreciate y'all um, again. And the next video you will see is another creative expression. Um, shout out to Backyard Enterprises. My name is Leron McAdoo, and I am presenting the Little Rock 2022 Kwanzaa 365 Artistic Expression. Let us get activated today. Right now, you're about to see and look at and visualize and have in your mind's eye this great dancer, performer. And actually, I knew this dude as an artist. As a matter of fact, last year around this same time, he was at Garbo doing an oil painting of a still life. This man is phenomenal. I didn't even know he was a dancer. I just knew he could paint with his hands, but I didn't know he could dance with his feet. Wait, have time. All right, giving me Nicholas Brothers vibes. I like it. I like it. Next up, we'll have AJ and Jaden for our candle lighting. Abari Gani. Kaumba. Whoa. 
My name is Jaden Glover. My name is AK Glover. As today is the 6th day of Kwanzaa, we celebrate the sixth principle, Kumba. Kumba means creativity. Hold on, hold on. Some ways we can celebrate this principle is by letting our imagination run wild. You could write a poem, create a song, or draw a piece of artwork. For my example, I'm going to draw a piece dedicated to Kumba, as well as finish creating my vision board. To me is creativity by using your imagination to think of good ideas. We like the black candle in the spirit of Kumoja. <coughs> we like the the outermost red candle in the spirit of Kuji Jagalia. We'll like the outermost green candle, the spirit of Ujama, or Ujima. Then we'll like the uh, middle red candle in the spirit of Ujama. Then we'll like the middle green candle, the spirit of Nia. And then we'll like the innermost red candle, the spirit of Kumbo. <clears throat> Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. Ashay. Next, we'll have uh, one more uh, creative expression um, by Backyard Enterprises. My name is LaRon McAdoo, and I am presenting the Little Rock 2022 Kwanzaa 365 Artistic Expression. Let us be activated by this dude who has somehow convinced people that he is an artist, a poet, a singer, a rapper, a motivational speaker. LaRon McAdoo. Yeah. Bright days inspired by Amanda Gore. Let us appreciate the bright days, but never forget the dark side of the sun because the light of hope causes some smiles to cast shadows of doubt. Let us not forget the pariah pit. We've become good at shoveling over our regrets with ceremony. Let us live up to the justice we claim. This nation put pen to paper to promise power to people. So let's not promise power, then pin the people down. Change is inevitable, but progress must be intentional. The more perfect is not buried, I believe is planted. Waiting to be watered with more than words, but deeds that take root, break through and grow fruit. Not rhetoric, but results. Not only repaired, but restored. A country where all are made whole. Let us see liberty is more than a statue, but a standard of living. Let us appreciate the bright days, but never forget the dark side of the sons and daughters of this flag. We are often waiting, waiting for our greater selves. But this is how you wait. You take the order of the day, you bring back what was prepared, and you clean off what has been left behind. Because waiting means serving. So here's a tip. Our yesterday should be waiting, meaning serving our tomorrow. That's what an inheritance is, the past paying for a future. We owe ourselves to unite states of mind and be the many oneness. We must appreciate the bright days. We must destroy the detrimental darkness dwelling deep down, determined to destroy till our destiny decays. We must know our original sin can't be erased until it's raised. We must appreciate the bright days. We must give our least of these hope and our helpers praise. We must show the world we are born to amaze. We must let everyone be the free and the brave. We must be better with all people always. That's the only way we can be saved. My name is LaRon McAdoo, Ron Mack the Hip Hoptimist.
it's not my turn to speak right now, but that was hard. <laughs> that was real. <laughs> that was dope. It's always your turn to speak, Wesley. You're the host. Um, but anyways, it is time for just a few announcements. Uh, don't forget, we are filling up the box um, for the storybook project. Um, definitely drop by um, today or tomorrow um, for dropping off books, 1001 Wright Avenue. Um, there is the address on the screen. Please help us fill up the box. Tomorrow, we are celebrating a lot of things, Wesley. What are we celebrating tomorrow? Imani. Imani. We are also celebrating the new year. Yes. 2022. So we look forward to everyone joining us tomorrow, 1 o'clock p.m. Same link. Last time, let's kick off the new year properly. Um, we're going to give our gifts. So make sure that you get down the pyramid to drop those books off um, so we can give our communities a wadi. Um, we're going to have a special feature on uh, where you can get, you know, a Kwanzaa meal um, and support, you know, a Black business wherever you are. Um, so, like I said, books you can purchase if you don't have any at home. Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing is a full service bookstore. A lot of sales. And we also have Kwanzaa kits. There is the 1619 Project donation. Um, if you're interested in supporting our partnership with the Arkansas Lighthouse Academies, um, go to bookshop.org backslash 1619. Um, remember, we do have the book giveaway. Pyramid is hosting the Derek Barnes Children's Book Giveaway. The titles that you see on screen are available for pickup. Just 1001 Wright Avenue. Um, just mentioned you saw it at Kwanzaa and get, pick up your free title. Uh, tomorrow, once again, uh, when someone says Habari Ghani, uh, you know, you can say Happy New Year and you can say Imani. That means faith. So today we'll close out with um, Wesley and Harambe, which means come together, pull together. Oh, special thanks before I close out to all of our creative expressionists today. Um, we had a pianist, uh, Sarah Hutchinson. Hutchinson, we had, um, you know, a dancer, Wade Hampton, and then Ron Mack, that was very powerful. Um, thank you so much for presenting all of our Kumba expressionists today. So turning it over back to Wesley. All right, everybody come up off a of mute and let me see your faces. Come off of mute and let me see your faces. Bargani. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how everybody uses that creativity. Um, and again, please stay after uh, after we go off the live because uh, the panelists are still here. So I know there was a lot of questions. Um, so stay after as long as you need to stay after. So when we lift our fist up today, we're going to say Rob base six times, which means come together. So everybody put their face on your face. And when I count to three, we're going to say Harambe six times. One, two, three. Oh,
Harambe. Yeah. 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 All right, all right. I hear you.